The Orioles beat the struggling Devil Rays for nothing. The Rays left six runners in scoring position, one of the many reasons that they aren't in playoff contention this season. The Jays beat the Royals today in a 20-hit game. The Royals led 3-0 until the 7th, when the Jays scored five runs, capped off by a bases-loaded double by Troy Bloss. They held on to win 6-3. The Red Hot Twins won yet again in a crazy game, which featured a bottom and ninth interference call on a fan who knocked a caught ball out of Twins' first baseman's glove. Twins ace Brad Radke got pulled in the second inning after allowing three runs. The Twins spokesperson said that it was not injury related. Troy Hunter won player of the game honors, going two for four with a two run home run and an RBI triple. He also made a spectacular catch in the outfield, robbing a White Sox hitter of what would have been, what would have been a run scoring single. With the win and the White Sox loss, the Twins took first place in the wild card and second place in the AL Central. They won 5-4. The A's completely slaughtered the Rangers 9-3 and their starter, Barry Zito, allowed no hits until there was one out in the 8th inning. The Angels came from behind in the ninth inning and beat the Yankees 6-5 on Vladimir Guerrero's walk-off Two RBI double in the bottom of the ninth. In the senior circuit, or National League, Roger Clemens and his Astros beat the lowly Pirates 5-1. Clemens finally got all the offense he needed and he pitched a masterpiece while he was at it. He didn't allow a hit until the seventh, a solo home run by former Met Xavier Navy. The Phillies beat the Mets 4-3, helped by former the Rookie of the Year, Ryan Howard's two-run home run. This was Howard's NL leading 44th of the year. Carlos Delgado also homered his 38th, but that was enough for the Mets to come back. The Marlins beat the Brewers 6-5 at Pro Player Stadium in Florida behind an impressive performance by Mike Jacobs at the plate, coming up big hit after big hit. The Nationals beat the Braves and the team with the worst record away from Washington found a way to win in Atlanta 7-6. From the top to bottom, their lineup capitalized with runners on base. The NL Central leading Cardinals held on in a close game against the Cubs that featured a spectacular catch by Cardinals third baseman Scott Rowland. He also knocked in both runs the Cardinals scored, winning player of the game honors. The Rockies' offense exploded in a complete shelling of the Padres up in Mile High Stadium in Denver. The light air up there sure helped the Rockies and their five home run total. The most home runs hit in the game by one team this year is also by the Rockies. They did. They hit eight in Denver earlier this season. They won 13 to five. The Giants beat the Reds in the city by the bay, San Francisco, four to one. Ken Griffey Jr. In a solo home run, Barry Bonds did not play. In a 15-inning thriller, the Diamondbacks took an early lead against the Dodgers. Lost it, fell behind, came back, tied, lost it again, and then won it on a three-run walk-off home run by Orlando Hudson. The Diamondbacks won 9-7 on 20 hits. The Dodgers had 14 hits. Let's look at the AL standings now. As you can see, the Yankees are up by five and a half games over Boston. Detroit in Central is leading the Twins five by five games. The White Sox are a close third at five behind five and a half games. Oakland is up on the Angels by five and a half games. Let's look at the NL standings now. With the Mets at top of, in first place in the East by incredible 13 and a half games over Philadelphia. In the Central, the St. Louis Cardinals are leading a tight race of a game and a half over Cincinnati. And in the West, the Padres are down a game to the Dodgers. In the NFL preseason, the Philadelphia Eagles beat the Pittsburgh Steelers, the defending champions, 16-7. And a day after his game, Miami Dolphins quarterback looked on form in practice. As the football season draws closer, we have a good idea for who will win 
Lombardi Trophy. The favorites right now for the NFC is the Carolina Panthers, and the AFC is the Kansas City Chiefs. In golf today, we had the Bridgestone Invitation. Tiger Woods holds the lead with a 9 under par. He shot a 6 under, 64 yesterday, and made 4 straight birdies. But that was not the highlight of the day. On the final hole of the day, Tiger hit a tee shot that hooked less left. He then attempted to hit a 3 wood from the spectator section. It bounced off the pavement and onto the clubhouse roof, 100 yards away from the pit. There was no out of bounds at the Invitational, so the ball is considered playable. They found the ball a half an hour later, and Tiger Woods got to drop it from the edge of the course. He had an amazing shot that landed the ball on the green and almost saved par in this wacky turn of events. But the ball rolled left, and he settled with a bogey. Many golfers saw that, said it was the oddest thing that they'd ever seen. At the end of the day, we look at the scoreboard and see that Phil Mickelson sits in an awful six over par, and Davis Love is trailing Tiger by one under at, at eight under par. Let's look at the Pilot Pen Tournament. Thanks. I'm live here at the Hamden Newsroom because of the soggy weather today. I wasn't able to be at the Pilot Pen live for you guys. But I'm here to tell you to report all about the new updates coming in from the Pilot Pen Newsroom. Well, we have now known that all the semifinal action for today, it's been postponed for all the night sessions today. So anyone, all the diehard fans who were bought tickets to this are now sitting waiting under all the tents packed outside, waiting till the night session or for the rain to stop. As soon as the rain stops here, the court's going to be dried off and all the matches will resume play. So as soon as they come, they're going to be played. Now, in men's tennis tournament singles news, we have news that James Blake, the defending champion and ranked fifth in the entire world, has just been defeated by ranked number 59, Ruben Ramirez Hidalgo of Holland. The USA hometown hero, home of the J Block, has been defeated in three sets, losing in two horrible tie breaks. All the fans were very unhappy about this result, but they had to give a hand for Ruben Ramirez Hidalgo, who put up a great fight and in the end came out victorious. In women's single news, Lindsay Davenport came out victorious over Amelie Moresmo in a three-set match. They both fought very hard, but in the end, Lindsay Davenport was the winner. The defending champ showed, showed true courage and hard power in all of her serves in all three sets. Amelie Moresmo put, put up a great fight, but in the end, it just wasn't enough to beat the defending champ. Now, I hope to see some more semifinal action today, because I can't wait to see some tennis out in center court. Back to you guys. Thanks, Wes. The mayor of New Haven says Pilot Pen is a wonderful tennis event, and many competitors describe New Haven as a great place to play. That's all for Sports Report. Now back to you, Marcus. student from Connecticut is at the center of airline security investigation in Houston, where a partial stick of dynamite was found inside some luggage that Howard McFarland Fish, he's 21 years old of Old Lyme, was flying from Argentina to Newark when he was arrested in Houston. He had been in South America on a vacation. Federal authorities say that he was, that they found an explosive along with other contraband and items. Initial reports said Fish told authorities that he had been mining and often handled explosives. Federal agents are looking to verify his claims. In a telephone interview with ABC 24 News, Fish's father, Howard, said he spoke to his son on the phone. His son told him that, that the locals sold him a package which he was supposed to give to the miners, but decided to keep the dynamite for himself. 